Will you explain it to us all then, Detective? No. I can peel back the layers, I can take it to a point, but what lies at the center? Only one person can tell us who killed Cassandra Brand. Who? Aww, yeah. Today's lesson is all about the charming and witty private detective Benoit Blanc, who is the main character in the Oscar-nominated Netflix film Glass Onion. Now, I wanted to start off by sharing a fun fact with you. Did you know that the actor who plays Benoit Blanc, Daniel Craig, is also well known for playing the world's most famous spy, 007 or James Bond? Pretty cool, huh? Well, do you actually know the difference between a detective and a spy? Why don't you take a moment and answer? Now these professions might seem really similar. The main difference is that a spy gathers intelligence for a government or an organization. While a private detective tends to work for a private individual or for law enforcement solving crimes. So here's what we'll do today. First, you are going to watch the scenes with subtitles and see how much you understand. But if you miss anything, it's no big deal because we are going to explain all of the most important vocabulary, connected speech, cultural context, and even grammar so that you can understand everything. And then we'll actually test you by having you watch a final time without subtitles. You're gonna have a lot of fun doing this and seeing how much your comprehension has improved. All right, but before we get into that, I wanted to let you know that if you are new here, well, every single week we make fun lessons like this one with your favorite movies and series so that you can understand fast speaking natives, even without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles, just like you're gonna do today. So join our community of millions of learners just like you who are learning the most fun way by hitting that subscribe button and the bell down below. Oh yeah, let's get to it. Benoit Blanc receives an invitation to join wealthy tech giant, Miles Braun, on his private island in Greece. But he isn't the only one. He's joined by Miles' friends, Claire, a respected politician, Lionel, a prominent chemist, Bertie, a former model, and Duke, a well-known gamer. Let's check out a scene where they all meet for the first time. Hello, stranger danger. Wait a second. Benoit Blanc? Oh my God. Are you Benoit Blanc, the detective? Did you solve the murder of, oh, what's your name? That, um, the, the belly dancer with the thing and the thing. That's you? It is, <laughs> in the flesh. Oh. I'm obviously familiar with you all as well. What an extraordinary gathering. Crew, we've arrived. Somebody like me takes something like this about a group of rich folk with an army full of lawyers. Now, folk generally means people or a group of people who share something in common, such as a culture, tradition, or way of life. You said that you were going to be researching these folks for motive. Did you find anything? Yes, I did. For rich folk with an army full of lawyers. What they want was to get them alone. Let's look at the connected speech here. Notice that Helen's accent is from the south of the United States. In this sentence, she doesn't pronounce the letter F in of. Instead, the entire word is pronounced as a schwa, uh, uh. Then, when she says lawyers, instead of rounding her lips to produce the ah sound, ah, uh, ah, uh, her jaw is relaxed and instead we hear ah, ah. Together, this sounds like an army full of lawyers. A rich folk with an army full of lawyers. If you want to learn more about different American accents, check out this lesson next. A rich folk with an army full of lawyers. What it wanted was to get them alone. Here we have another nice example of connected speech. Benoit says um, which is the reduced form of them. The T at the end of get is pronounced with a flap T or D sound. So instead of saying a full get them, we hear get them. Get them alone. Reductions are super common in everyday English. Can you guess the full form of these reduced words? Gotcha. Let me. Tryna. Got you. Let me. Trying to. 
isolated for a weekend with, in your words, the world's greatest detective. The word isolated means that something or someone is alone or separated from others. For example, during the big storm, many people were isolated from their communities as they needed to stay indoors. You feel isolated by the world, but it's not the world isolating you, it's you. But you, hello, stranger danger. Now, stranger danger is an expression we use to remind children that it's important to be cautious around people they don't know. For example, it is important for schools to teach students about stranger danger. Here, Bertie J uses this expression in a humorous way, since she doesn't know who Benoit Blanc is. Hey there, wait, what are you doing there? Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, it's okay. No, stranger no, 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 wait, wait, it's okay. Stranger it's okay. danger! No, please! Oh, what's your name? Did you notice that when said quickly, the H sound in her disappears? So all we hear is the er. Together, it sounds like, what's her name? Let's listen again. Oh, what's your name? It is, <laughs> in the flesh. Oh. The term in the flesh means that you are seeing or meeting someone in person, not just seeing them on a screen or hearing about them from someone else. For example, I finally got to meet my favorite soccer player in the flesh. In the flesh, boys. In the flesh. <laughs> I'm obviously familiar with you all as well. When we are familiar with someone or something, we know them or it well. For example, I am familiar with her because we were in the same English class last year. Wow! <gasps> she didn't photograph well. <laughs> well, she probably wasn't familiar with the process, having spent most of her life sitting for oil paintings. <laughs> what an extraordinary gathering. We say that something or someone is extraordinary if they are really amazing or exceptional. In other words, they stand out from the ordinary things around us. An example would be, the fireworks display on New Year's Eve was truly extraordinary. Crew, we've arrived. We say that a crew is a group of people who work together on a project or task. For example, the crew of a ship is the people who work together to ensure that everything on the ship goes well. A crew can also refer to a group of friends who hang out together or a group of people who work together and are close. For example, a group of skateboarders who hang out together and skate together might refer to themselves as a skate crew. This is my crew. Our operator, see? Sequoia. Disruptors have assembled. Who's that? Why are you in Greece, Mr. Blanc? I, I was invited by Miles Braun. Tight with Miles? No, never met. Oh, I get it. The, uh, the murder mystery thing. Benoit Blanc is going to help solve the mystery of Miles' murder. <laughs> this would be fun. Cute. Well, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Disruptors have assembled. Disruptors are people or things that change the way things are usually done. They challenge the traditional way of doing things and come up with new and innovative ideas that can sometimes be controversial. For example, when the first smartphones were introduced, they were considered disruptors because they changed the way people communicated and accessed information. If people assemble, it means that they come together or gather in one place for a specific purpose or event. Assemble. Who's that? So here we have another nice pronunciation point. Notice that the S in whose actually has a Z sound, whose. Also notice that Duke drops the TH in that. He speaks quite quickly and the words join together, so what we hear is who's that. Listen again to how he says this and try to imitate it. Who's that? Who's that? Tight with Miles? Being tight with someone means being very close to that person. For example, I'm really tight with my older brother. We do everything together. How well do you know Jake? Uh, we're tight. Really? Yeah. Really? It's a uh, more of a professional relationship, though. No, never met. You might have noticed it's common for native speakers to drop subject pronouns, such as I, you, he, she, they, etc., in casual speech, especially when it's obvious who you're referring to. Here, we know that Benoit is saying that he has never met Miles. Oh, I get it. I get it means that you understand something. 
It's when you're learning a new skill or listening to someone explain something to you, and suddenly it clicks and you understand what they're talking about. For example, after my teacher explained the math problem to me a second time, I finally understood it and said, oh, I get it now. If you don't understand, you could say, I don't get it. Check out this example from friends. <laughs> my mom doesn't have any faith in me. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't get it. Now, if you are like most learners, you probably get nervous when you're thrown into a situation where you have to be fluent right away. Like if someone starts speaking to you at work and you have to unlock your English skills right in that moment. Do you find yourself in this position right now? I get it. I totally understand you. I am a language learner myself, so I've been through all these frustrations where you spend money on a course that just doesn't work, or you spend hours studying textbooks because this is what you've been told all your life you're supposed to do, and you're just bored. You don't get the results that you actually want. And this is exactly why we created our own course called Fluent with Friends, which is the most fun, natural, and convenient way for you to learn English. Now with this course, you will learn to understand natives at any speed by mastering the principles of connected speech. You will learn the vocabulary that you actually need to communicate confidently. And you'll learn to understand the cultural confidence so you can laugh along with every single joke. So what are you waiting for? You can try it for free right now with our three-part masterclass. Just click up here or down in the description below to sign up now. Cute. Cute is a word we use to describe something or someone that is pretty or attractive in a charming or endearing way. It's often used to describe babies, animals, and young children, but it can also be used to describe things like clothing, hairstyles, or even behavior. Lionel, you are too sexy to be a scientist. And Claire, you look so cute. Aw, thanks, bird. Sometimes it can be used to describe something that is clever or amusing rather than just pretty or attractive. For example, a funny joke might be called cute, or a clever prank might be called a cute idea. But I have been able to secure a V VIP guest. Well, I'd go out on a limb and say all of our guests are very important, Alexis. That's cute. Miles Braun is surprised when Benoit Blanc shows up on his private island because it turns out he didn't actually invite Benoit. Let's dive in and see how Miles handles this situation and what kind of language and vocabulary we can learn along the way. A wooden box was delivered to my home with some simple children's puzzles, which uh, once I completed them, there was an invitation inside. I'm very confused. Is it, 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 this is part of the game? This is just like the other ones, but I didn't send it to you. How many of these boxes did you create? Five, one for each of my friends. No prototypes. Right? My, my puzzle guy barely got the five done in time and he apprenticed with Ricky Jay. A wooden box was delivered to my home with some simple children's puzzles. We say that something is simple when it is easy to understand, deal with, or use. For example, the teacher explained the concept in a simple way that everyone could understand. Simple can also mean unintelligent, ignorant, or foolish. If used in this way, it is usually considered offensive. A puzzle is a game, problem, or challenge that requires a person to use their intelligence, creativity, and problem-solving skills to find a solution or complete a task. For example, the math problem was such a puzzle that even the teacher had trouble solving it. Get ready to open your first puzzle. Go! You see what I did? The first puzzle is a puzzle. Oh my god, how adorable is that? But did you know that a person can also be puzzled and a situation can be puzzling? What do you think that means? To be funny? To be confused, confusing? To be uncertain? If a certain is puzzling, it's difficult to explain or understand. So, did the singing bowl right reveal anything of interest? I don't know. A little more puzzling than definitive. All right, well, like you said, it's not an exact science. To be puzzled is a feeling of being stuck or not knowing what to do, and often involves trying to figure out or make sense of a confusing or complicated situation. He had the most wonderful expression on his face. You know, just before they'd ask him a question, just before he'd answer, he looked puzzled. This is part of the game. Benoit Blanc has a Southern accent, although different from Helen's. 
One characteristic of the American Southern accent is that it has a non-rhotic R, like in most British accents. We can hear this in how he says the word part. Now with my standard American accent, I would say part, but Benoit says, it's part of the game. However, unlike in most British accents, the Southern accent tends to use an American T, like other American accents. Benoit pronounces the T in part with a D sound. To know when to use the American T or flap T, we generally use it after an R before a vowel or diphthong in words like 30 or dirty. We also use it between the two vowels or diphthongs. Also, Benoit drops the F in of, so we are left with the schwa sound uh. Altogether, it sounds like part of the game. Listen again and imitate him. This is part of the game. This is just like the other ones, but... Let's look at the grammar here. Other can be placed before the pronoun ones when it is clear from the context what you mean by ones. For example, we don't need those books, we need the other ones. Here, ones means different books. You can use other one when referring to an alternative. For example, I don't want this apple, I want the other one. No test boxes, no prototypes. Eh? A prototype is a model or a sample of something that someone is trying to make in the future. An example would be, the engineer built a prototype of the new car to test its performance and features before it was mass produced. My, my puzzle guy barely got the five done in time and he apprenticed with Ricky Jay. When Miles mentions his puzzle guy, he means the man who is his preferred source for creating puzzles, whether that is purchasing them or designing them for himself. It is common for us to refer to someone as our something guy or lady, if that person is our preferred provider of that service or product. For example, whenever my laptop has problems, I like to take it to my computer guy. He always knows how to fix it. Yeah, you know how I got a guy for everything? Well, they're all in New York. My suit guy, my shoe guy, my ticket guy, my club guy. And if I don't have a guy for something, then I have a guy guy to get me a guy. Barely means that something happened just a little bit or almost didn't happen at all. For example, I was in such a rush this morning that I barely made it to work on time. My, my puzzle guy barely got the five done in time and he apprenticed with Ricky Jay. To be apprenticed means to be trained in a skill or trade by an experienced person over a period of time. Ricky Jay was a famous magician and actor who taught Miles Puzzle Guy how to create puzzle boxes. You'll be helping me win the North Orlando Chili Cook-Off as my apprentice. Really? They never let me help. Someone reset the box. They oh, sent it to oh, you oh. as a gag. Let's invite Benoit freaking Monk. I am mortified. I, I've got the predefinite detective in the world at my murder mystery party. That is so legit. Mr. Braun, I've learned through bitter experience that a, an anonymous invitation is not to be trifled with. Hey. Try to solve the murder mystery, if you can. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's pretty next level. Someone reset the box. To reset means to start over again, or to make something go back to its original state or condition. A great sentence you can use is, when my computer froze, I had to reset it to get it working again. They sent it to you as a gag. A gag is a joke or trick that is meant to be funny or make someone laugh. For example, if someone tells a funny story or plays a prank on their friend to make them laugh, they might say it's a gag. An example sentence would be, the comedian did a few opening gags about the band that had played before him. To gag also means to experience a sudden uncomfortable feeling of tightness in the throat and stomach that makes you feel like you're going to vomit. I'm still waiting on my sausage. Oh, well here, have some of mine. Miles is doing a murder mystery. Let's invite Benoit freaking Monk. The word freaking is often used as a slang word to express surprise or excitement or to emphasize a feeling. It's a way of adding extra emotion to what you're saying. For example, I heard you got the promotion at work. That's freaking awesome. Here, it's just emphasizing the excitement of having a famous detective in his murder mystery. I am mortified. I, I... If someone is mortified, it means they are really embarrassed or ashamed about something they did or something that happened to them. For example, I was mortified when I realized I had food stuck in my teeth during our date. I, I've got the predefinite detective in the world at my murder mystery party. The word predefinite is actually not a real word. It kind of sounds like one, but it isn't. It's possible that Miles meant to use the word preeminent, which means that someone or something is more important or better than others. For example, Stephen Hawking was a preeminent theoretical physicist and cosmologist. That is so legit. Which of these clips shows the same meaning of legit as in the scene? 
How old are you? I'm 12. More like 1,200. Check my birth certificate. He's legit. <laughs> You're kidding, this is green crayon. I legit needed those for my taxes. You don't get it, do you, Denise? I used to be legit. In fact, I was too legit. I was too legit to quit. The answer is C. Here, the word legit is used in a slang way and often means that a person or thing is very cool or very awesome. However, in clip A, legit means someone or something is authentic or valid. For example, his qualification is legit. In clip B, legit means really or honestly. For example, I'm legit planning a trip abroad. In all of these cases, legit is actually short for legitimate, which means that something is just or logical. Mr. Braun, I've learned through bitter experience. The word bitter has a few different meanings depending on the context. Bitter is a harsh, unpleasant taste that is sharp and often thought of as the opposite of sweet. For example, the coffee was too bitter, so I added more sugar. Drink it up. Okay. Mm. Ah, it uh, tastes kind of bitter. Yeah. Bitter can also mean something that causes pain or unhappiness, either physically or emotionally. For example, you should dress warmly. It's bitter outside. As with every pumpkin, there's a story. It was a cold, bitter night when tap, tap, tap on the window. Someone who is bitter is angry and unhappy because they cannot forget bad things that happened in the past. For example, she has suffered terribly over the years, but it hasn't made her bitter. At some point, I just, I stopped pulling my punches. I got rageful. I got bitter. As you can see from the examples, overall, bitter refers to something that is unpleasant or difficult to endure, whether it is a taste, a feeling, or a personality trait. An anonymous invitation is not to be tried for. Here, anonymous means that something is done or created by someone who is unknown or doesn't want to be identified. For example, I received an anonymous gift in the mail. When something is not to be trifled with, we mean that it should be taken seriously and not treated as unimportant or insignificant. For example, if someone tells you that a wild animal is not to be trifled with, it means that that animal is dangerous and you should stay away from it. What we don't know is why. Candidly, that terrifies us. Rice is not to be trifled with. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's pretty next level. I don't want to toot my own horn. It's a way of saying that you don't want to brag about yourself or your accomplishments. An example could be, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I got an A on the test. When we say that something is next level, we mean that it is exceptional or it's standing beyond what is typically experienced or expected. For example, that new dance move you just did was next level. All right, I warned you. Now it's time to take your English to the next level by testing everything that we've taught you today by watching the scene a final time without subtitles. I look forward to hearing how you do. Wait a second, Benoit Blanc? Oh my God, are you Benoit Blanc the detective? Did you solve the murder of, oh, what's your name? That, um, the, the belly dancer with the thing and the thing. That's you? It is. <laughs> In the flesh. Oh. I'm obviously familiar with you all as well. Which of these means the same as in the flesh? In the moment? In real life? In person? You sent me a box. You received a box? Yes. The wooden box was delivered to my home with some simple children's puzzles, which uh, once I completed them, there was an invitation inside. Do you have that invitation? Well, yes, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very confused. Is, it, 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 is this part of the game? This is just like the other ones, but I didn't send it to you. Which of these is the opposite of simple? Easy, complex, fun. Mr. Braun, I've learned through bitter experience that a, an anonymous invitation is not to be trifled with. Okay, look, come on. I'd love to have you visit me at my home. There, you've been invited. Well, You're an official guest now. Thrilled to have you. I mean, relax. Enjoy yourself. 
hey, try to solve the murder mystery if you can. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's pretty next level. If you toot your own horn, you keep your achievements secret, brag about your achievements, you plan your next achievement. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to give it a like to let YouTube know that you want more lessons like this one. And hey, if you're a fan of the mystery genre, another Netflix film you might want to check out is Enola Holmes. In fact, we recently created a lesson with that movie and you can check that out next. That's flattering. And yet it took our mother's disappearance to bring you home. She meant to go. She's not coming back. No. But the truth is, Mother always had a reason for everything. Her own way of doing things. And those kind of mysteries are always the most satisfying to unpick. I don't want a mystery, Sherlock. I want my mother back here and my life as it was. You're being emotional.